welcome to the midweek update for 1018. Now oh, we're back to that. 1018, huh? You didn't do 101823? No, and I didn't do October 18th. No, I did you didn't. 1018. Yeah, you did 1018. Yeah. It's I'm nice. A, I'm sure people go, I wonder how he's going to announce the date this week. I, I bet. I bet they mm -hmm. sit with great anticipation each and every week. Oh, yeah. For sure. I wonder how it's going to come this week. Mm-hmm. 1018. 1018 it is. It's a beautiful fall morning, though. It is. Nice, cool, crisp morning. It's supposed to be nice today. So, yeah. If you got things to do outside, it looks like today's the day because rain is coming. Today is the day. There, I like fall rains, though. Um, if I can sit on the porch and it's not too cold, it's just beautiful to listen to the, you know, uh, to the rainfall. Rain. And kind of the way that it patters on the leaves on the ground. I just think it's pretty. Yeah. I enjoy it. Other than it messes up my time in the woods, but that's fine. Well, you can go get wet. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, the deer still like to run around in the rain, right? They'll still be out there. Yeah. I don't know how much moving they'll do. Then you can go find them. Yeah. It's like yeah. an Easter egg hunt. That's right. I can. T I'm telling you now. All of these deer hunters, I have a tip for you. You can just go into random neighborhoods, and they're right there. Or, you know, this time of year, if you just get in the car with me, they seem to want to, like, always jump right in front of me. So you can just pop out the passenger side and take one out. Take one? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's no problem with you discharging a firearm on the side of the road. No. no there's, probably, there's probably no laws or anything I'm sure there's that. not. <laughs> If they are, they're just man's laws. They're not God's <laughs> laws. Oh. <laughs> well, that was awkward silence. Anything else? <laughs> no, no. I'm All right. Well, we're, we're jumping to our announcements then. Well, Brian, we still need a helper in the nursery one Sunday a month. I think it's, uh, yeah, it'll actually be two Sundays, but yeah. By one Sunday, I mean two Sundays a month. Yes. And um, lots of cute babies in the nursery. I have a baby up there. She's pretty good most of the time. Yeah, yeah. There is a lot of babies. We've uh, we've had an influx of babies. We have, we it, you know what, though? The thing is, is I've realized we're saying this all the time. Right. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. we've had a, an influx of little ones. We, so. we do, like a ton. It seems like yeah. every year we have three, four, five new babies. Yeah. We're a fertile bunch here at Wapak First. <laughs> I guess. When it says be fruitful and multiply, we take that seriously take that serious here. here. Yeah. But because of that, and what a blessing it is. I mean, the Bible says children are a blessing of the Lord. And uh, so God is blessing us with babies. And, you know, if you remember having a baby, it, it is nice to be able to take some time to pray and regroup yourself at church on Sunday. It's time for those folks to maybe have 30 minutes with their spouse where they can just sit with each other. And um, it's a real blessing. And it's such an important job because new moms want to make sure that their babies are being left with someone that they can trust. And so if you are a person who has, you know, maybe the babies, you're out of the baby phase and uh, would enjoy just holding some babies, praying over them, um, loving on them in the nursery, it would just be um, twice a month. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, those babies grow up, Brian. <laughs> they do. They become teenagers. And they eat a lot more. They eat a lot more. They, yeah. They scream about as much just in different ways, I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. But uh, the, those grown-up babies in the youth group, uh, there is no youth group this week, Sunday, 1022. Uh, but next Sunday, the 29th, they will meet at the church at 4 o'clock to go to Crytersville, and they're going to have a scavenger hunt. So uh, partnering with our uh, neighbor church up the road. That's right. Uh, not too late to get into a life group. I would say that that's a really critical part of our Christian journey. So if you're not meeting once a week in a small group, um, I would encourage you to get in with a small group of people and share your life with them and uh, grow together in your uh, love of Jesus. Yeah, I, th I would... Second that, that uh, life groups are very important. Yep. The other one, this is more of an opportunity for you. Um, not so much a need for the church, but we have an opportunity for people to serve as communion stewards. And if you have never served communion, um, there is a really special blessing 
that comes with serving Christ in that way. And we've never had an issue just inviting people up. And, you know, that's that's a great and I'm, I'm perfectly fine with doing that every week. But what some people have said is, you know, I just I never am really sure when to come. And I'm more of somebody who likes to be able to plan and prepare. And so there's a sign up sheet on the Welcome Center. And if you have never served communion, I would encourage you to just give it a try. And if you're like, I don't like being up in front of people, it, it doesn't feel like that when you're up there. No, no. Um, it's just serving your brothers and sisters with, quite frankly, one of the greatest gifts um, humanity has ever received. And you want to be a part of that. Um, also, we need some folks at the Welcome Center. So if you find yourself, you have a warm personality, um, enjoy talking with people, go sign up at the Welcome Center. It's a, it's a really easy lift. It's just a matter of making people feel loved as they come in the church and taking down any questions that folks might have. You don't have to have the answer. You just have to get it to the right person, which is typically Charlotte, and she can take everything um, from there. Uh, we still need some volunteers with the election day dinner. Yeah, we do. And I learned that it's the 123rd election day dinner. 120. So here in a couple it years. It started in 1900. It. Wow. Well, that makes it really easy then to remember how many we have. Adam. Yeah, yeah. That's great. That was for, really nice of them to start it in 1900. I'm glad that that whoever started it in 1900 was thinking about us in the future. Right, and I don't know how I've never pieced that together because it's at least every other year we say what year it was. Right, yeah, I mean, I just couldn't remember, but man, 123 years we've served this meal or some variation of that, this meal. That's impressive when you do anything for 123 years. Right. I mean, a lot has happened. That means like people were eating the election day supper during like both world wars and prohibition oh yeah and you know what else i mean there's big major the depression yeah i mean there would have been civil war vets there potentially right. i mean that's just yeah yeah uh, it's that's crazy to when you think about the history that this dinner has yeah yeah did they even have like indoor plumbing i don't know now i'm like really showing my lack of historical context um i would say I would guess not. I don't know for sure. I wasn't hmm. around in 1900. No, I was a, I was a ways off. Yeah. Um, you know, but 80 or so years later, I can <laughs> run onto the scene. Um, yeah, so Election Day Supper still needs some help with that. Cost of turkeys is approximately $45. So if you want to help donate a bird, um, it would be much appreciated. Or maybe you could go hunt us one. Well, yes, not in Ogles County, though. You can't fall turkey hunt. Yeah. There's your ODNR tip of the week. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Stinking commies. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there a reason why? Uh, I think because they're trying to revive the turkey population. Okay. It kind of went away for a while. Hey, it's, uh, on, it's on the men. Okay. Maybe they should steal some where they have lots of turkeys and bring them here. I, yeah, I guess that's an option. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Well, speaking of turkeys, no, I'm kidding. Uh, dartball practice <laughs> begins on Tuesday, October 24th. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't hit that dartball board to save my life. That's all right. Yeah, it's okay. you still okay. have a good time? Yeah, that's the thing. I'm about I, – I would have trouble believing that anybody could be more terrible than I am. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not going to say that you're bad, but – you don't have to have a lot of talent. You don't have to have a bunch of skills. In fact, if you didn't even want to play, you can just come and join in the banter. And hang out. And hang out. It's a good time of fellowship. You know the weirdest thing? So I usually try to split and go to the Wapak one a few times and then the one in Salina a few times. Right. The Salina board is half the size. The bases are smaller. And somehow, when I go over there, like I hit home runs... I do all kinds of things, and the board is harder. It's a different uh, style, though, right? You have to throw underhand. And you have it's to. Closer. It's a little bit closer, but truth be told, I just kind of fling them and pray that they go in the right spot. Right. And over there, it just seems like my prayers are heard more. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know what it is. Well, there you go. But anyway, uh, all joking aside, if you have nothing to do on a Thursday evening, um, 
or I guess the first one's on a Tuesday, but well, most practice. of the time it's practice on a, is on Tuesday. Games are on Thursday. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yep. So games are on Thursday. If you don't have anything to do, it's a great time of fellowship and you will really enjoy uh, the folks that are there. And it's not just for men. So ladies, uh, come on out and play darts. Uh, if you need some help with fall cleanup, your church family's ready and willing to assist you. And if you're willing to be one of those people that are ready and willing to assist, we would love your help with that. So uh, you can uh, check the information in the bulletin. There's a little place. You probably can't see it, but it's down there at the bottom. We promise it's there. It is there, and you can let us know. I think that that's it on the announcements. I think so. There was quite a few. There is quite a few announcements. Oh, there's a football football game this week. So football oh, parking. We need some football wanna... parking help. Yeah. yeah. So, But I think that is it. I believe that that's it as well. If not, we're cut back in, but uh, that means we're on to birthdays. Well, we'd like to wish happy birthday this week to Alicia Longsworth, Alicia Music, Diane Elshire, and Timothy Kilbrew. Happy birthday, everybody. Hey, happy birthday. We hope it's a good one. Well, Brian, this week we're going to do a reflection. Okay. So I have been reading through the book of Ecclesiastes again. It okay. used to be one of my favorites, but I, I've not read it in a while. And, you know, when I read this book, I always kind of picture Solomon as like this guy wearing all black that shops at Hot Topic. You know what I mean? He's like meaningless, meaningless. Everything's meaningless. Why? Why do we bother with anything? We're all going to die. I mean, it's kind of like, okay. But I love the book because it's just kind of real life. It's like, you know, there's times when he's like, just enjoy your vain little life. And it's like, okay, yeah. You know, I mean, he's, he's being blunt and right. I can appreciate that. And there was this section, though, that I read, and I'm like, and he says this quite a bit in multiple different ways. So he keeps repeating it, so you can tell it's on his mind. And he says, Behold, I, behold what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat, drink, and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil. This is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. And then he goes on and says, There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, and it lies heavy on mankind, a man whom God gives wealth, possessions, and honor, so that he lacks nothing of all that he desires. Yet God does not give him the power to enjoy them, but a stranger enjoys them. And so, you know, Jesus was always being criticized. Like they called him a drunkard and a glutton. Why? Because he was always eating and drinking everywhere that he went. And I'm thinking Jesus knew at that point in time, like he was telling people he's going to the cross. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about myself. You know, if, if somebody came in here and said, you know, Josh, in two years, you're going to die a really brutal and terrible death for God's purpose. I think every day of my life, I'd probably be going, okay, I have one March left. And then like, I'd get to March and I'd be like, oh, this is my last one. 29 days, 28 days, 27. I think it would consume my mind. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it would. And yet here we have mm. Solomon saying, you know, life is toilsome. And that's true. Like, I mean, anybody that's lived long enough, there's some hard bits here mm -hmm. um, but he said the greatest thing you can do is to eat drink and find enjoyment and and by enjoyment it actually the hebrew word could be translated goodness kind of like you know david said surely goodness and mercy and i don't know if it's the same hebrew word or not actually mm -hmm. but it, it could be easily and even the note in the esv says this could mean good or enjoy it it, it could be either one of those um and, you know, I was thinking, well, clearly our life isn't just supposed to be about myself because that's what the rich man does. He tries to hoard everything for himself. He has no relationship. So this goodness, this eating and drinking should be done in community. 
Mm -hmm. The book of Acts says that the, the Christian believers, that they ate and drank together daily, that they met together daily. And so often we think of our life, we chase after these luxuries. We try to work harder to get a raise. And as I was thinking about it, and this is a silly example, but I, I really do think it makes the point. So the poorest of the poor person can sit around a table and have Folgers coffee every day and have community. Somebody else might be able to buy Duncan, and somebody else can get coffee or more every week. But really the important thing is, where's your fellowship? Mm. You know, one person may drive a small Ford and somebody else might drive a mid-grade Honda and somebody else might drive a really nice Lexus. But where are you driving the car to? Like, what are you using it for? And are we eating and drinking and finding the goodness of God every day? Or are we spending our lives trying to achieve some goal that really means nothing at all? And, and I think as I look at my own life and I look at the life of the people in our church, it's a mixed bag for us. Mm -hmm. Some seasons we do well and some seasons we don't. Um, but I love what he says, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. And I'm like, I'm occupied with so many things, but how often am I occupied with joy? Yeah, well, I think it's easy for those other things to keep us occupied. And if we could just be occupied with joy. Yeah, you start running your kids all over the place. And then all of a sudden you realize you're running them all over the place so they can have, quote, fellowship. But really what you're doing sometimes is you get so busy, there's no fellowship. You know, Lindsay and I realized last week we were bing, 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 bing. And like, we were missing things that were really important, unintentionally. Mm-hmm. It was just day by day we didn't think about it. It's not until we stepped back. Right. Well, it's easy. Yeah, it's easy to get lost in that hustle and bustle and lose the joy. Lose so the joy. Speak. Yeah. And so I've just been thinking a lot about joy here lately. And really, we can have joy only because of Christ. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, really, everything we do really is worthless. As Solomon says in Ecclesiastes over and over again, it's a great evil. Everything you get, you have to leave behind to some other schmuck that may not use it in the right way. And it makes sense. He had palaces and all this stuff, and he knew. It was all going away. But uh, this is, I should probably give you the passage. It's Ecclesiastes 5, and I read 18 through 20, but it was really 20 that, that I focused in on, for he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. I was like, I don't even remember what I did. I just remember being so grateful for it. And well, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, when you think of it that way, there's a lot of times that I know when we have conversations with folks or whatever that they don't remember, you know, the exact place or maybe what they were doing, but they remember the people and the, the joy that that whatever event you know, brought them. Right, yeah. They, you know, they it just... wasn't how much money they had in their bank account that day or anything like that. It was just the joy of being surrounded by that group of people. Yeah, it, it's, it, I mean, to your point, we, we see a lot of people at the end of their life. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare that I hear anybody reflecting on what they have, what they had and what they're leaving behind. I have, I have seen that. And when I have, it's been really sad because you can tell the person is tormented by it. Um, it's not this attitude of look at all this stuff that God blessed me with and that I enjoyed with my family. It's, it's so unfair that I don't get to take this with me. Um, and we can get like that in our day to day. It's not fair that I don't have this and this person does. It's why are they being blessed and I'm doing the same things and I'm over here and I'm upset. Well, we can have joy in everything. Mm -hmm. I, I talked to a buddy, a, one of my closest friends down in Cincinnati yesterday and we ran around a bunch and we both, uh, let's just say, did not always live redeemed lives. And we were just talking about how good God was to us to allow us to be where we are now mm -hmm. and how it was nothing but his grace and mercy. 
And so we can find joy in the everyday. And so I would just like to, for you to reflect today and think, am I enjoying what I have? Am I finding joy in today? And you may think, well, there's not a lot for me to have joy in right now. I'm in this trial or that trial. There is joy. Um, you know, the scripture says, though trials may last for a night, joy comes in the morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And your joy is not found in the trial. Your joy is found in the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, and maybe one other quick point. If you're in a place where you feel no joy and you're in a pit that you feel like you just can't dig out of, don't be prideful in it. Reach out to us. We're coming pray with you. Uh, your church family is here to surround you. Prayer changes things. Community changes things. And sometimes when we feel less than joyful, um, it can make us want to withdraw. Right. And that's the time when you need to lean in and Mm -hmm. not withdraw. I talked to somebody the other day, and I'm not going to go into details, but they they just come out of a trial, or they're they're in the midst of a trial, and there was a real kind of tragedy that hit them, and it's a hard thing. And they said, you know, Josh, I see these other people that have this thing that I lost, and I'm happy for them. Honestly, I am. But it's hard for me to be around them and see that because I'm grieving what I've lost. Well, there's still joy there and the reaction is to pull away because it hurts but really there's joy that can be found when you connect to other people's joy and can rejoice in what they have and it's hard to do at first but you realize once you're in it's almost like a cold swimming pool yeah you know it hurts getting in but once you're in the water it's warm and you can enjoy yourself and there's joy there that that was a good reflection been a little bit since we've done a reflection so it was a good one to get back into well why don't we pray for folks sounds good father we just pray that your joy would be our guidepost that every person at wapak first would live their life with joy so that their co-workers their family their friends those they interact with would say what is so different about those people So, Jesus, we thank you that you said we are blessed when we grieve. We're blessed in the midst of our hardships. We're blessed in the good times and in the bad. Because, Lord, you're in the storms with us. And so help us to find joy in any situation that we're in. And help us, Lord, to define our lives by you. Set our feet on the rock and help us to experience the great joy that only you can give. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great week. Have a good week, everybody.